just about every night on this program, we talk about how Republicans are in many ways complicit with this president's actions because they continue to let him do whatever he wants, even if it's at the jeopardy of this nation's best interests. So I want to bring in our senior political correspondent right now, Andrew Whitman. He's going to show us how the GOP is responding to the latest of Donald Trump and his comments about the election and a peaceful transfer of power. Yeah, Rich, and it's worth noting that some Republicans in D.C. are pushing back on the president, but many are doing it more forcefully than others, while some are leaving enough wiggle room in their positions to allow for all kinds of election mischief later on. Even Mitch McConnell, who's being praised for taking one of the firmest lines with Trump on this, uh, is doing so, tweeting that the winner of the November 3rd election will be inaugurated on January 20th, that's good, but saying nothing about counting every vote, even if they come in after November 3rd. Liz Cheney, the number three Republican in the House, left the least daylight in her statement, backing the peaceful transition of power and pledging to uphold it, as well as to uphold the Constitution. Mitt Romney gave a pretty strong statement to reporters, but if you listen closely, he sounds like he's talking about a different Donald Trump than the rest of us know. That there will be a peaceful transition of power and that anyone who has uh, sworn an oath to our Constitution, including the president, I'm confident uh, is committed to the same principle. Have you met this president? We also got fairly thorough support for the rule of law and peaceful trans uh, transition from Republican Senators Cory Gardner and Susan Collins. That may be somewhat self-serving. They're the two most endangered Republicans in the Senate come Election Day 39 days from now. Then we get to the Republicans whose answers frankly reminded you of all the responsibility the GOP should bear for refusing to act as a check on the president. South Dakota's Kevin Kramer somehow sounded sort of critical of Trump while supporting him 100 percent, as North Carolina's endangered Tom Tillis totally ignored what Trump said, except what he said about the challenging the election part. The president speaks in very extreme manners occasionally. I didn't find what he said last night to be overly extreme, quite honestly. Well, I think that the president will accept the result. We've got to make sure that it's fair. Next up, a senator you've probably never heard of, South Dakota's Mike Rounds, who frankly seems to have taken a big old gulp of Trump Kool-Aid, writing, quote, I think everybody believes that we will have a very peaceful transition, he told reporters, seeming to ignore what the president said. Here's where Rounds loses me and maybe even touch with sanity. He continues, quote, but that means people that protest have also got to be peaceful as well when he does win. In America, we always have a peaceful transition or continuation of responsibilities. Is he saying that if people protest, that would disqualify the election? Lindsey Graham, of course, has been out of touch with reality for some time when it comes to this president. He essentially tacked a condition onto his comments that you and I won't decide this election with our votes, judges will. People wonder about the peaceful transfer of power. I can assure you it will be peaceful. Now, we may have litigation about who won the election, but the court will decide, and if the Republicans lose, we will accept that result. But we need a full court. We'll end with 33-year veteran Republican Richard Shelby of Alabama, whose statement to reporters began in defense of Trump, but ended up in the same confusion the rest of the nation seems to be experiencing right now. Shelby began, quote, we've always had a peaceful transfer of power. That's one of the hallmarks. Fact check, true. He continues, and I think this year will be no exception. He's hoping. Quote, we don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does, he continued. Yes, we all agree with you, Senator. He concludes, quote, I think whatever happens, we will have a peaceful transfer. That's Senator Richard Shelby on a wing and a prayer, Rich, just like the rest of us. Uh, and I think that's the perfect way to get into our guest, Andrew, former Senator Byron Dorgan, Democrat from North Dakota. And Senator, um, I know every time we talk, we're talking about some other surreal new um, normal that we're dealing with, but if you agree with me, I think we're about to find out just how strong a democracy we really have. And I want to know if you agree with me that we should, for this conversation, just take it as fact, not even possibility, that this president, um, in any event, with the, with the exception of him winning, will declare this election rigged and question the legitimacy of it um, and will not have a peaceful withdrawal from office. If, if we can have that as a starting point, which I think is unfortunately the practical reality, my question is, we look at the U.S. Senate and we look at 53 Republicans and their names to us, maybe I might speak to them through an interview, but to you, you know a whole bunch of these folks. I've heard very tepid pushback from a lot of them after the president basically said he's not going to leave, um, not unless he wins. 
and there won't be a peaceful handoff. When push comes to shove, do you think they'll put country before party, or are you just not sure? Well, I don't know the answer to that. They have not done that to this point. The uh, Republican majority, I'm talking about uh, Senator Mitch McConnell and his majority in the Senate, they have not seen fit, despite a wide range of indiscretions by this uh, president, to put country ahead of politics. Now, it's also the case that this president has said that uh, the election will be rigged. He said that if he loses, it's because it was stolen. So, uh, you know, I think what he's doing is preaching to uh, those uh, people out there, whatever it is, 30 or 35 percent, uh, who support him no matter what, that um, if he is uh, somehow declared a loser, it means it was stolen, and he's going to do all that he can to overcome that. I think, uh, you know, Bob Woodward said this morning that what the president uh, seems to be trying to do is to create a train wreck on Election Day, and I expect that's probably the case. I've heard some Republicans say, no, 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 we'll have a peaceful transition. Um, it'll go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court will decide. And that was somewhat glossed over. But since when do we have 330 million Americans in this country? We don't have nine people deciding who our president right. is. I mean, to me, that was almost as jarring as what the president said, as if our vote doesn't decide every four years who's the commander in chief. We're going to leave it to nine people, one of whom we don't even know who it is yet. Right. Well, I mean, you know, we had an election in the Supreme Court in the year 2000. It was five to four. And they chose George W. Bush. Uh, and they chose to decide that Florida should not be recounted. I, I would think when he said what he said this week, and he said the same thing previously, that uh, I will not commit to a peaceful transition after the election. I, I'm going to wait and see. Is this Was this thing stolen? And so on. I would think every Republican senator would say, shame on you. Shame. We, we've not heard that in 200 years, and we shouldn't expect to hear it now. The American people have a right to go vote, and that vote will decide who the next president will be. Just that vote. Obviously, this week, uh, we remember uh, Justice Ginsburg. Uh, you were one of the votes uh, that put her on the high court. Um, an old colleague of yours, Lindsey Graham, um, I, I want to remind people what he said four years ago and, and what he said this week. I want you to use my words against me. If there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president, who it, whoever it might be, make that nomination. And you could use my words against me and you'd be absolutely right. I will be leading the charge to make sure that President Trump's nominee has a hearing, goes to the floor of the United States Senate for a vote, because that is my job, and I believe I am doing what the people of South Carolina want me to do in this regard. Senator, you served with Lindsey Graham. Um, do you recognize him anymore? Uh, what he said then, what he says now, uh, and what he said about Donald Trump as a candidate in 16 versus the aiding and abetting, at least in my eyes, that he's doing for this president? You know, I served with uh, Lindsey for many years. I like Lindsay. I mean, in fact, I should tell you, I, I've written five books. Lindsay actually did a book teaser on the back page of my first book, the back cover. I mean, you know, so I, I know Lindsay very well. I, I don't know this Lindsay. I just don't. This is not the Lindsey Graham I know and the Lindsey Graham I worked with in the Senate. It's a vastly different character. I've heard Democrats surprise me um, when, you know, I'll say, listen, you know, I got some reticence. People talk about packing the court or about all of a sudden trying to add, you know, Puerto Rico or D.C., give them statehood or do um, or even change uh, as the Senate, by the way, has the power, as I understand this, to make if you're going to change law, you need to have six or seven justices or, or rewrite right. the rules. I thought that was dramatic, but they said, wake up. You know, these are elected Democrats, uh, including some formers who said, they changed the rules here. It's time the Democrats stop trying and, and losing to cheating, in effect, and now just decide to deal with reality the way it is. Where do you fall on, hypothetically, Biden's our next president, there's a Democratic majority in the Senate. Do they rewrite the rules, given what we've seen happen now and, and in recent memory? Well, I would say people have talked about pack the courts. I would just say this. Mitch McConnell and President Trump are packing the courts. 
That's what they're doing. Uh, you know, when uh, Barack Obama was president, nine months, 10 months before uh, he was to leave office, there was a vacancy. He nominated a Supreme Court justice and uh, Mitch McConnell uh, said, you know, we want the American people to be able to decide. Let's wait till the American people decide in the election. Uh, now, and, and so they stole that, as you know, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even meet with Merrick Garland uh, and they wouldn't hold a hearing for him. They essentially stole that seat on the Supreme Court. They're fixing to try to do that again. Now, they may well get that done because, uh, uh, you know, the, the circumstances in the Senate may allow them to, to make that happen, uh, what, 30 or 40 days before an election, which I think is stealing another Supreme Court justice. It, what they have done in terms of creating a six to three conservative, and I'm talking about very conservative Supreme Court, uh, will affect almost everything. It'll affect uh, health care. It'll affect racial justice issues. It'll affect voting issues. And, and so this is not sort of a one-time situation. We'll live with this for decades unless we find some way to deal with it. Finally, um, you know, we didn't even talk about that. Apparently, at Times reporting at the Pentagon, they're openly worried about what if the president after the election decides to invoke the Insurrection Act. Um, obviously, we've talked about the president saying that he, he wants to delegitimize the entire election if he loses. All, are you optimistic that the American experiment will figure this thing out and, and we'll be all right? Or are you concerned here just how bad things could get in the next couple months? Well, I'm really hopeful. I think when they go to the polls, I think most people will ask the question, do we really want four more years of this? Is this really good for the, do we want four more years? Is this good for the country? And I think they will decide that uh, in the way they cast their ballot. Well, I sure as heck hope so. Senator, as always, I appreciate you making time for us. Thank you. Thanks. Good to be with you. Thanks a lot. And up next, everyone, a woman who survived COVID but still has debilitating health problems even six months after she first tested positive. She'll join us to discuss what she's been dealing with. She, one of the so-called long haulers, whose number in the hundreds of thousands suffering from similar complications.